Okay, today we come to chapter 5, verse 40. Acts chapter 5, verse 40. <clears throat> Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, <clears throat> the apostles have been arrested for preaching Jesus. Uh, the religious leaders want to beat the tar out of them and, and warn them uh, not to preach again. In fact, they have done that already. Uh, and one fellow, Gamaliel, said, no, you better not do it. You better take it easy on these guys because what they're doing might be of God. And, and if you oppose it, then you're going to be opposing God. Well, it says in verse 40, and with him, with Gamaliel, they agreed. What Watch this. And when they had called the apostles back and had beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they beat the apostles. Anyway, they still beat them. Which probably means they lashed them with a whip 39 times. So you're not talking about getting punched in the face a couple of times. You're talking about maybe being whipped 39 times. That is not what Gamaliel advised. But evidently they wanted to back their warning with force and show that the apostles, and show the apostles who was boss around the place. And so they did beat them. If they were trying to show the apostles who was boss, they failed. Someday, those religious leaders, and I'm sure by now they have found out, who really is the boss, and it's not them. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, who they continued to hate and continued to persecute. Verse 41, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Their bodies may have been sore from the whipping, but their spirits were flying high because they were obedient to Jesus, and they were even privileged to suffer for him. It is an honor for a Christian to suffer for Christ. It is a privilege to complete in our bodies the sufferings of Christ for his church, as the Bible says we should. It is a privilege to sacrifice something in response to all the kindness that Jesus has shown us. 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They were jailed. They were warned. They were beaten because they preach the Word of God. So first chance they got, they're out there doing what? Preaching the Word again. I love it. I love their dedication. And it does, does uh, provide a lesson for us, too. Discomfort, trouble, opposition, persecution, whatever, isn't necessarily a sign that the door to a particular ministry is shut. Those things may make it more difficult and painful to do what is right, but they should not stop us from trying. You know, the Bible says if we faint in the day of calamity, our faith is weak. Let's go into chapter 6. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. The Grecians and the Hebrews, spoken of here in verse 1, both refer to Christians. 
Remember, people were getting saved from every culture. So these Hebrews and these Grecians were two segments of a very large and fast-growing early church. And when you have a group that large, some are bound to be overlooked. It's just the way it is. And of course, <clears throat> when that happens, there's always the possibility of division and hurt feelings, especially if the people involved are walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. But anyway, there's trouble. Verse 2, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not fitting that we should leave the word of God to serve tables. So they were, the apostles were trying to do everything, including redistribute wealth and food and, and all this stuff. Now, serving tables is a worthy, worthy Christian ministry, but the apostles were called to pray and teach the word of God. So serving tables would not be right for them. See, it's a good calling, but it wasn't their calling. Verse 3. Therefore, brethren, look ye out among you for seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And so they needed to find some Christians who had the gift of administration, organization, but they also needed to be men of good spiritual character. And this would be their ministry. And any honest labor becomes a holy ministry when it is done for God's glory by people who are living for Jesus. Verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That's what they were, that's what they were supposed to do because they were the early pastors, the early bishops, the early preachers and teachers. They had to give themselves over completely to the word of God and to prayer. If a pastor today isn't devoted to prayer and teaching the Word of God, then his priorities are dead wrong. And I know what it's like out there. So I can hear someone say, yeah, but you don't understand. My church won't give me enough time to do those two things. They've got me busy doing all sorts of administrative works and presiding over business meetings and this and that and who knows what else. They just won't give me time. Well, the solution is very simple. Quit. Tell them you're going to quit if you don't get more time because you have to do things God's way. Let them hire someone else to run their social club if they don't want to give you the time to do that. Every man of God who is called to preach the word should do what God says he should do, not some church board or some denomination. And they give you a hard time? Well... Yeah, it's going to take faith to quit. But what are you going to do? Obey my God or obey man? Look what the apostles did. They had their priorities right. Five. Well, the apostles said what they said, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timnon, and Parmiras, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, Antioch, I should say. So the entire church agreed that it was a good idea to leave the apostles to the Word of God and to prayer and find someone else to do the work of service in the church. Everybody agreed it was a good idea. And that's nice. But I can tell you that it wasn't the correct thing to do because it was popular with the people. It was the correct thing to do because it was according to the Word of God. Six. So they named all these people that they wanted to put in charge of that ministry. Verse six, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. They laid their hands on them because even though... It was a ministry in the area of physical things, food and such things as that. The apostles laid their hands on them because it's still a spiritual ministry. They were not teaching the Word of God. 
At least that wasn't their top priority. Nevertheless, their physical labor was spiritual because it was done for Jesus and the church, and that's why the apostles laid their hands on them. The apostles officially commissioned them. They were given authority. 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Division was threatening the church. But notice the apostles had handled the problem biblically, and therefore the problem went away. Problems between people, even between Christian people, are inevitable, especially when you're dealing with a large church. But when they are handled with wisdom from God, according to the word of God, they're going to be controlled and they're going to be solved correctly. Eight. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen was filled with the grace of God. God's grace is the fuel that empowers our souls to do the correct thing. God's grace is his gift that enables us to say and do what is pleasing to him, even if it's difficult. Stephen was full of that grace, and we're going to see it in action very shortly. Verse 9, Then there arose certain from the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the freedman, and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and those of Cilicia and of Asia, and they disputed with Stephen. Now, Jerusalem had a variety of synagogues for foreign Jews to visit when they were in town for the religious festivals. And some of these foreign Jews, and they were strictly Jews, they were not Christians, but they started to argue with one Christian Jew, Stephen. And let's see what happened. Verse 10. It says, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. And that's because Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they couldn't handle that. They didn't have any answers. Verse 11, Then they suborned men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. That's so typical. You know, when an unbeliever doesn't want truth, they often slander the one who speaks the truth. So these foreign Jews were no match for the wisdom of Stephen. And what did they do? They slandered him. They couldn't deal with the issue because they, they were wrong. And so they just attacked him. Verse 12. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. So, well, here we go again. They arrested Stephen. Verse 13. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. Well, they had to come up with false witnesses because it was a lie. Um, and I'm sure Stephen said that the temple would soon be destroyed because that's what Jesus said would happen. And he said the ceremonial law with its rituals and animal sacrifices should be set aside too because the death of, of Jesus on the cross fulfilled the things that they pointed to. So that's true. I didn't like that. And so they raised up witnesses who could put a nice negative spin on what he said and, uh, and hold it against them. You know, the devil accomplishes much by taking the word of God and either repeating it out of context or simply changing a word here or there. Stephen had the word of God to back up anything that he said. You can believe it, but it didn't matter. 15, and all who sat on the council looking steadfastly on him saw that his face was as though it were the face of an angel. In other words, Stephen is in trouble and he is about to be stoned to death, but he is calm and he has a holy confidence that radiates from his face because he knows that he's in the will of God. And that can carry you a long way. 